Hi guys, let's do something different today. Um, let's build a tester for the TL494IC. Uh, this chip is a very common controller chip used in power supplies, uh, ATX power supplies and other similar switching power supplies. Yeah. Uh, the reason you might want to build a tester like this was highlighted on a repair I did this week. So I was looking at an ATX power supply and it's actually hard, a KA7500. B controller chip, yeah, and that chip is a pin for pin compatible with this one TL494. Even on the circuit board, when I unsoldered the chip, it said TL494, yeah, but that's what was fitted. The chips are the same, and on mine, this chip had a hole in it, it had burnt, yeah, so I knew the chip was faulty. I replaced the chip, and the power supply didn't work. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. So uh, I got my oscilloscope and I went on the outputs of the chip. And I could see the chip was oscillating. I could see it was running. I could see pulses, square wave pulses, yeah. And I said on the video, well, what if you don't have an oscilloscope camera? You use a multimeter. And my multimeter has a hertz range that goes up to into the kilohertz, hundreds of kilohertz, yeah. So I connected my multimeter to here and I could see I got about 90 to 100 kilohertz signal. So I know it was oscillating. Uh, but what would happen if you don't have a multimeter with that facility, you don't have an oscilloscope, but you have a situation where you want to test these chips? And I thought, you know, interesting thing is, let's design and build a, test, a tester, yeah? But that we can just plug these chips into and we'll know if they're good or not. Because you'll see these chips a lot. And I'm sure in many cases you want to know, is it working, okay? So, how do we design the uh, tester? Well, we start off with a data sheet, yeah? This is the data sheet for the TL494. And this is a test circuit, which it shows you, yeah? So we're going to use a circuit, basically, to design our tester. Uh, now, the way this works, basically, this is an oscillator. You see this RT and CT, yeah? These two components form an oscillator. And basically, the resistor charges the capacitor to a certain voltage, at which point the capacitor discharges, the chip discharges it. And then it charges again, the chip discharges it. And it forms a waveform like this. It says here voltage at CT. You can see it going up and down, yeah? And I measured that on my oscilloscope and I found this is about 3 volts and this is 0 volts, yeah? So that's your oscillator. How does the pulse width modulation work? Well, it's quite simple actually. It has a voltage on this pin here called feedback, yeah? So let's draw the feedback voltage in here. Okay. And let's say the feedback voltage is 2 volts. Okay. The way this thing works is when the voltage on the capacitor is below 2 volts, the output is low. Yeah? Nothing happens. When the voltage on the capacitor goes above the feedback voltage, the output switches on. And that's what causes the split the pulse to start, yeah? So the pulse starts when the voltage here, on this, this what's called the sawtooth waveform, is above the feedback. And then when the capacitor discharges, there it switches back off. Yeah? And then again, on the next cycle, when it goes above the threshold, it switches on. Yeah? When it falls, it switches off. Now, if you look at this, imagine what would happen if the feedback voltage went lower say 1.5 yeah now the pulse the drive pulse switches on sooner because it only has to charge capacitor to 1.5 volts to switch it on not two so effectively you get a wider pulse yeah and that wider pulse can be used to turn the the, the power transistors on for longer to drive your power supply therefore the output voltage increases the feedback voltage increases and then the pulse narrows just because of this slope can you see that that's how it works so how can we make a tester well all we really need to do is set the components here to a frequency that is slow enough for us to see what's happening yeah and on the output here instead of the driving transistors we put some leds so what we can do is this we can take these out yeah and from here we connect a resistor, yeah, and from here we connect two LEDs, yeah. Two LEDs, okay. Yeah? 
and then from each LED we connect to the outputs okay that will test it inside here this C1 E1 C2 and E2 are actually transistors it stands for collector emitter so inside here basically is a transistor yeah another transistor and the control circuit in here is switching these on and off in turn yeah and we can see the emitter is connecting to ground so when that transistor turns on yeah, it'll connect our LED through the resistor to ground the LED will light up value of the resistor well I think about one kilo ohm would be good uh, reason for that 15 volts 1.5 kilo ohms would give about 10 milliamps yeah which is okay for an LED if I use a 1 kilo ohm even if you bring this down to 9 volts it's still give about 9 milliamps it's, it's, it's about a milliamp it's a, it's a milliamp per volt yeah so we have a nice range of voltage if we want to use different supply and these LEDs will still light up so that's that's the output bit yeah the input what value should we stick in here well there's a formula for this but we're not going to do the maths the formula is called the time constant yeah time constant and it basically says it equals the value of the resistor in ohms times the value of the capacity in farads yeah and that's in seconds that's the formula seconds equals resistance times farads but so they messing around all these zeros and maths we can just use google yeah google's great so to work out the value of these two components we're going to use google so let's go over to the uh, screen and let's have a look to see what google tells us about this okay one moment so this is the time constant calculator it's mouser.es if you just google time constant calculator you'll find this uh, the voltage I actually measured on the chip was about 3 volts but this doesn't matter I'll show you I'll put 3 volts in here yeah and then if we choose a value of a capacitor say like 1 microfarad and like 10,000 ohms we see that it's like 0.01 of a second it's very fast that's too fast for us so let's stick another note on there we now get to 0.1 of a second yeah but that's still flashing back and forth it's pretty fast we probably want about half a second so let's put in here well you don't get a 5 but you get a 4.7 yeah that's giving us 4.47 seven of a second yeah that's how long the LED will flash for so that's some decent values we can just play it you know put the values for whatever we want but this doesn't matter by the way 12 15 it, it doesn't actually make any difference to the calculation so 4.7 microfarads and 100,000 ohms is going to be a pretty reasonable value so we'll use those that's how easy that was yeah don't mess around with the maths just uh, just ask Google okay so this resistor here RT is going to be 100k yeah this capacitor CT is going to be 4.7 microfarads yeah so that, that's that's sorted out feedback needs to be somewhere between naught and three and the position of that voltage the higher the voltage the narrower the pulse yeah so ideally we want this to be about 1.5 then the lights will flash fairly evenly backwards and forwards yeah the best way to get the this sorted out if you measure the voltage on feedback when a switch chip is switched on it's actually equals ref reference is 5 volts yeah so by f default feedback internally generates 5 volts and we want to make it lower so the way to do that is we're going to connect a variable resistor yeah, to ground and the more we move the resistor up here the lower the resistance to the ground and the lower that voltage will get yeah if we go all the way up that'll just go to zero if it's on zero then the LEDs will never flash because it's down here if it's more than three the LEDs will never flash because it's too high this never goes above feedback but we can all just this resistor to put it somewhere in between I don't think the value matters let's, let's put 100 kilo ohms 
we can change it try different ones not a problem that's it yeah okay now there's a few more inputs on this output control that needs to be connected to the five volts to enable the output so that's what this is doing we'll leave that there yeah um, also on a lot of um, circuits like this where you have an internal reference voltage you generally put a capacitor from here to ground it's just to stop any noise or whatever varying the voltage here so we'll stick a capacitor in there we'll put 47 mic it doesn't matter as long as it's more than 5 volts yeah probably work just as well without it but it's just to keep it stable yeah while we're at it for stability again we'll also put a capacitor from feedback to ground as well yeah so how can I draw it in here again it's just to keep the voltage on this stable when we you know we're waggling this thing around if there's a bit of noise or something again it doesn't matter 47 microfiles will do again anything over 5 volts put a 25 volt in there uh, what else have we got left we got DTC this is a signal called dead time and if you look at the data sheet it tells you you can connect this to ground yeah and then we have these error amplifiers you see you've got plus and minus inputs yeah and you'll see the plus inputs are connecting to ground we don't these in these error amplifiers not to be doing anything so we can take this out and we connect it to ground yeah and that basically is our circuit diagram so i'll just draw that out clearly and then if you want to build one of these it'll be really simple for you one moment okay <laughs> and there you have it um this is your plus 15 volt supply yeah um so you have the the chip or you put a socket like a 16 pin socket yeah so you can just plug your chip in and you can see that all that's involved are two capacitors this is a 0.47 microfarad this is a 47 microfarad uh, oh i'll tell you why i actually put another one here as well yeah so three capacitors which are these two are probably aren't even essential yeah um that one is essential uh we have two resistors 100k and a 1k and two leds and that's this the variable resistor so there's not many components there um i suppose i ought to just list them and as this is let's make it look very professional yeah okay there's your bill of materials yeah um this one and this one are not critical these 47s anything you probably do in there 10 or whatever it doesn't really matter i wouldn't make them very huge but you know they're not important this one if you change that if you make it smaller the thing will oscillate faster yeah uh again this should be something around this because it'll give the correct current for your leds and again all two this will affect the timing so there's your circuit there is your schematic um i'll leave it there for a moment yeah a screenshot of that if you want to and uh, you can build one yeah okay so i have one i've already prepared earlier you knew it didn't you okay here goes let me show you so yeah as they say here's one i prepared earlier uh, so that's mine working i just put together a bit of breadboard um if i was building one of these i'd build this on a bit of vero board this circuit's very easy to to build on mate build on matrix board or vero, or vero board yeah um i can just show you um if you look down here this is the feedback voltage on pin three yeah this is what's set by this uh, variable resistor so if i increase this above about three volts it'll stop flashing yeah because the, the sawtooth waveform never goes up above that so it can't turn the transistor on as i turn it down now i've gone too low yeah so it stopped flashing it can't run so really you know it's uh, not difficult to design uh, little uh, testers for these chips if you have the the data sheet um and, and in doing that i mean i'm not really an electronics hobbyist i don't really build electronics kits but i enjoy doing this one and um, hope you might have enjoyed that as well so uh, yeah there's something handy little thing you can uh, build i'll just zoom in on it for you one moment 
there you go you can see it wasn't too difficult to lash together so um hope that's something you'd like to have a go at anyway guys that's the short video it's friday end of the week and uh, i'll see you all very soon next week with some more videos cheers now ciao